This is the Wakula Springs. This is the Wakula River in Wakula Springs, site of the uh, Wakula Springs Lodge, one of the coolest um, historic hotels in Florida. It's the uh, brainchild of a gentleman named Edward Ball, who died in 1981. I was just reading the history of Ed Ball, and uh, it's very, very interesting. He created this, he built this property, he bought this land around here in 1937. And his vision was to build a hotel and to have boat rides where people could take boat rides here and arrive on the Wakula River by a boat. But he had to dynamite part of the river, it says, interestingly enough, in order to make it possible for people to take boat rides here. He's quite an interesting character. If you, if you uh, Google Edward Ball, and this is all from memory here, so please go ahead and leave comments uh, in the comment section if I get anything wrong here. But Edward Ball, uh, he grew up in Virginia and um, did not have money but he was very interested in making money. He's quite a shrewd little young businessman. He convinced his father um, to let him quit school after primary school, so he only had a primary school education. He tried a number of different industries, apparently, including going up to Alaska to be a, uh, a gold miner. Didn't work out. He got his first lucky break, apparently, when his older sister married Alfred DuPont, supremely wealthy Alfred DuPont who gave him a job with an extravagant salary of, I think it was $5,000, which in the early 20th century, obviously is a hell of a lot of money. So that was his first lucky break, but he wasn't just somebody who got something handed to him and just ran with it. He, uh, pretty smart guy. He got involved in a lot of other different businesses. That was a food products company, I believe. He had the $5,000 salary at, but he invested his money wisely and got involved with a number of other business ventures too. And apparently he was into travel and he thought that this was when he saw this land here he thought this was one of the most beautiful places in the world that he had ever traveled to. And so his vision was to build this uh, beautiful hotel, which is still here today. And it's, it's, they started construction on this in 1937. He spared no expense, as you see when we go inside here. I mean, he hired craftsmen and artisans from around the world to create a very distinctive, uh, to, to create a very distinctive hotel here. This is now one of the, uh, it's part of the historic Hotels of America collection. And uh, there's 27 unique guest rooms here. N nothing cookie cutter at all. They're all completely um, unique. They each apparently have their own walk-in closets, which was very unusual at the time and other architectural features. As you can see, it's a beautiful day. So there's a few people who are out here sunbathing and such. And uh, he, 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 he has, uh, one of the distinctions of this hotel is it has the largest marble slab <laughs> of any hotel in the world supposedly about 70 foot long. I'm just gonna pan around here for a moment. 70 foot long marble slab, which is part of like the gift shop and, and, and restaurant. Let's take a walk in here. It's President's Day weekend, so there's quite a few people around. But you walk in and immediately you're, you're struck by this uh, Moorish style archway that you came in through from this way. And the, the architectural style of this place is described as Moorish Art Deco, which was something that I guess was in vogue in the late 1930s when this place was originally designed. But, um, this is the lobby. And you can see the, the ceilings are all very interesting and unique. And so it has these grand fireplaces. Let's take a look around. These panels over here are also very, very... These brass panels are also very, very unique and distinctive, and it's supposedly they're worth a lot of money too for collectors. Because these things are quite rare. Let's take a look at the ceiling here a little bit again here. Let's take a look at a few of these. You can see this huge gator here. Now let's go in here. There's sort of like an ice cream parlor and gift shop here. This is where the world's largest slab of, I see my family's eyeing up the ice cream. This is supposedly the largest slab of marble in the world. What, the, the, the website says in the world. The person at the front desk told me east of the Mississippi, this is the largest slab down. Did you know that? Largest slab of marble right here. Sort of an old fashioned uh, soda fountain here. What does the sign say? This says east of the Mississippi. The website says in the world. So in any case, 
70 feet. He's, here's more of these uh, brass panels that are quite distinctive and nice. But um, yeah, absolutely. This is, an, this is a super interesting place in Florida to stay if you enjoy staying in historic hells, hotels. One other thing about Edward Ball, the brainchild behind this Wakula Springs Lodge that I wanted to mention was he was apparently such a notorious tightwad. By the way, this is a really interesting original elevator over here too. But he was apparently such a notorious tightwad with his money, like a lot of rich people are, that he had what was considered at the time an incredibly extravagant prenuptial agreement, a very detailed prenuptial agreement with his, <laughs> with his wife. You can imagine the marriage didn't last long. But what I thought was interesting about it was he had this prenuptial agreement with 19 different pr special provisions of things that his wife was prevented from doing. And um, one of those things, which I absolutely loved, was that she was, hi there. According to the prenuptial agreement, she was forbidden from um, nagging him. And not only was she forbidden, to, forbidden to nag him, but there was also a definition of nagging so that he had it exactly defined of what nagging was and that there was to be no nagging allowed whatsoever. So Edward Ball, hero to many men all around the world.